High Court orders to submit list of all assets of S. Allen Group. ACC starts work to search Taka 40,000 crore launder. Reform in Cyber Security Act, other anti-people laws, soon law advisor. Electing government deserves right to amend constitution, says BNP leader Hafiz. Those were the headlines. Good evening. I am Shazan with English Bulletin. High Court has ordered to submit asset account of all shareholders and directors of S. Alam Group and asset list of their family members as well. A High Court bench of Justice Muhammad Kamrul Hussein Mullah and Justice Kazi Jinat Haq gave the order with a ruling on Sunday. The court ordered Bangladesh and Bangladesh Financial Intelligence Unit, BFIU, to answer the rule within four weeks. A Supreme Court lawyer, Mohammad Rokunu Zaman, filed the writ against S. Alam Group on September 17. Influential people linked with the previous Awami League-led government have laundered a large amount of money. The Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, has started working on the search for at least Taka 40,000 crore. In the meantime, the top craft busting agency has held separate meetings with the World Bank, ADB and the FBI. The ACC has started working on the search of the assets of former Land Minister Saifu Zaman Choudhury. It is also working on salvaging laundered money of S. Alam Group. The agency is also gathering information on Salman F. Rahman's laundered money. However, according to the ACC, the process to return the laundered money is complex. Reform will be made in the Cyber Security Act and other anti-people laws immediately, says law advisor Professor Dr. Asif Nodrul. He said, attempt is underway to nullify the laws the previous government had formulated in a bid to hinder the rights to information. Asif Nodrul made the comments while addressing a program of Manushe Jurno Foundation in capitals Agargao on Sunday to mark the International Day for Universal Access to Information. Only an elected political government deserves the right to amend the constitution. Claiming this, BNP Standing Committee member Major Retired Hafizuddin Ahmed called upon all to remain alert so that nobody can hinder the democracy. The BNP leader made the comments while addressing a discussion of Jatiyodabadi Mukti Joddo Dol at the Reporters' Unity in the capital, Dhaka, on Sunday morning. He demanded allowance for the families who lost their members during the movements in July and August. He said many of this interim government were involved with the 111 government. The interim government should hold talks with the political parties immediately to set the policy-making plans. A Dhaka court has placed former IGP Choudhury Abdul Al Abdullah Al Mamun on a four-day remand and former Wout councillor of Dhaka South City Corporation Hasibur Rahman Manik on five-day remand in a case lodged over killing of trader Abdul Wadud in Newmarket area. Additional Chief Metropolitan Magistrate of Dhaka, Mahbubul Haq, passed the orders as the investigation officer of the case appealed 10-day remand for each of the accused persons. Former Law Minister Anisul Haq and former Prime Minister's Private Industry and Investment Affairs Advisor Salman F. Rahman have been sent to jail after showing them arrested in the same case. In another case of Mirpur Police Station, the court ordered to send former Cultural Affairs Minister Asadu Zaman Noor sent to jail in another case. Shakib himself will have to make it clear if people are enraged upon him over political identity. Advisor for Youth and Sports Asif Mahmoud Shoji Bhuya made the remark while talking to the media at the Secretariat on Sunday. He said, it is very difficult to provide Shakib security if the issue is seen from the perspective of the people.
Former acting editor of the daily Amar Desh Mahmoud Rahman has been sent to jail in former Prime Minister Shoji Bajit Joy's abduction and murder attempt case. Mahmoud Rahman surrendered before the court on Sunday morning. His lawyers sought bail on condition of filing appeal. After hearing, additional Chief Metropolitan Magistrate of Dhaka, Mahabubul Haq, ordered to send Mahmoud Rahman to jail, denying his bail petition. Dhaka's additional Chief Metropolitan Magistrate Court sentenced Mahmoud Rahman and journalist Shafiq Rahman to seven-year rigorous imprisonment on August 17 last year in Shoji Bwajajoy abduction and murder attempt case filed in 2015. Now, a short break. We'll be back soon with... Biden welcomes Nasrallah killing, Iran warns revenge. Third day of Bangladesh India test in Kanpur abandoned due to wet outfield. You're watching ATN News. This is English Bulletin. Murder probe of journalist Kapil Shagor Sarva and Mehrun Rooney to hand it over to Police Bureau of Investigation, PBI. Advocate Shishir Munir made the disclosure at a briefing on Sunday. The plaintiff of the murder case, Noshe Roman, said from now on, Shishir Munir will fight the legal battle to unveil the murder mystery of Shagor Rooney murder case. Shishir Munir will hold meetings with investigation officers of the case soon. The date of submission of probe report of Shagor Rooney murder case has been extended 113 times so far. Next date of hearing in the case is October 15. In a continued effort to support the recovery of flood-affected communities, Ismaili Civic Bangladesh launched fourth phase of its flood relief drive. In this phase, the Ismaili Civic Bangladesh has distributed various kinds of seeds to flood-affected people in Kumilla, Norkali and Lokipur, helping families regain their livelihoods. The platform is leveraging funds contributed by the Ismaili community to rebuild critical infrastructure in flood-stricken areas. Two schools at Munshirhat in Choddogram Upazila of Kumilla district and two households in Adur Shoshodur in Kumilla are being reconstructed. The initiative also includes insulation of deep tube well in Chodugram, ensuring a long-term source of clean water for local residents. Earlier, Ismaili Civic Bangladesh, in collaboration with its Humanity Foundation, provided supplies to flood-affected people. Now news around the world. World leaders warned of potential repercussions after Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah was killed in Israeli airstrike in Beirut suburb. The killing of the Iran-backed group's chief has intensified fears of all-out war in the Middle East. U.S. President Joe Biden welcomed a measure of justice. Iran's supreme leader has said the death of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah will not go unavenged, a day after he was killed in an Israeli airstrike in Lebanon. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei announced five days of mourning in Iran in response to what he called the martyrdom of the great Nasrallah, describing him as a path and a school of thought that would continue. UN Chief Antonio Guterres said he was gravely concerned by the dramatic escalation of events in Beirut in the last 24 hours. Hamas and Hezbollah called Nasrallah's killing a cowardly terrorist act. Viewers, we'll take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching English Bulletin. Now, sports news.
The third day of the test match between Bangladesh and India at Green Park Stadium in Kanpur has been abandoned without a single ball bowled. Despite no rain today, the ground staff at Green Park were unable to prepare the field for play. This play of second day was also called off. In the first innings, Bangladesh scored 107 runs for the loss of three wickets in 35 overs. Muminul Haq was unbeaten on 40 runs, while Mushfiqur Rahim remained at six runs when play was halted. Before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again. High Court orders to submit list of all assets of S. Alam Group. ACC starts work to search Taka 40,000 crore launder. Reform in Cyber Security Act, other anti-people laws, soon law advisor. Elected government deserves rights to amend constitution, says BNP leader Hafiz. Biden welcomes Nasrallah killing, Iran warns revenge. And third day of Bangladesh India test in Kanpur abandoned due to wet outfield. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us.